Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. This is the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. This is Frank Cox talking to you. I got Johnny Burkett in the studio today. I'm very excited for this. So, true story, uh, Johnny just kind of pops in once in a while. Um, I don't really know what happens, <laughs> but uh, he, he just popped in. He was uh, We was going 50 different ways, and I was like, dude, you're here. Let's do a podcast. And so, uh, anyway, Scott jumped in the old, what do you call your car, Scott? <laughs> we'll call it silver. Jumped in silver and ran all the way down here to get everything set up. And so, believe it or not, he jammed out and got this podcast studio where it at least looked good on camera. we still got some work to do, but uh, we can at least do a podcast. And I even have papers in my hands. So, um, anyway, Johnny and I are going to just kind of, I'm going to ask him some questions. And uh, if you don't know Johnny Burkett, uh, he hails from the boot heel of Missouri. <laughs> I grew up down there. And uh, we've known each other how many years? When did we met way back in the good old days, back in early 2010s, 12s, somewhere in there. Back when uh, I was trying to figure out why Frank Cox was cooking on trash cans. <laughs> yeah, he was too. True story. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know uh, how far you back you want to go with all of this, Man, but I don't uh, know. we can go back as far as it. It don't really matter. So, but. true story. They had a podcast at the same time that I was learning about podcasts, and uh, we had the. Uh, what was our podcast called? It was uh, the Smoker Builder. Uh, I can't remember now, but it was on uh, Barbecue Superstars Radio. And, uh, you know, we entered in with the Johnny Cash uh, One Piece at a Time song because that's kind of how we built pits, One Piece at a Time. And and uh, you guys had your podcast yep. all about competition barbecue and talking about cooking and all kinds of stuff, right? The Lulu So Smoking Radio oh, Show. Oh, man, I didn't know if he was going to bust it out. I had or the not. two crunk Lulu guys on so. there. That was a, that was a pretty good, wild little show. You yeah. Know, Randy whiskey Hill. and uh, a little banter. I, yeah. told really say. I don't know how much cooking talk we had, but we had a lot of good guests that come on. Yeah, that was a, those was the good old days, man. And then we met in person for the first time at the Jack, yep. uh, the 25th annual, wasn't it? Uh, or was it the year before the 25th? <sighs> I cannot remember. It was like 2012. I remember me and Polar Bear yep. came down there. We was live streaming the Jack. Um, anybody don't know Polar Bear, you need to go way back in the Smoker Builder archives, probably on the forum, figure out who that man was. Um, that's the guy that got me started with uh, all this video and audio stuff and trying to trying to make good videos and things. We had a lot of good times. but A lot of good times. Competition barbecue was kicking in for me about that time. Uh, you know, we cooked the Royal for the first time by ourselves. Um, anyway, but you guys had your show on one night, and then we had our show on another night. And then another guy, Lance Moore, had his show. But then uh, through the whole deal, boy, you guys was a force to be reckoned with back in the day, I tell you. Uh, yeah, we was uh, we was up there a little bit, you know. Had to come back down, but just one of those things. You ran the food truck. Yeah, you could go down to where was you set up at? Uh, Charleston, Missouri, if you ever come through there, uh, the Big Red Sled was always parked there. The Actually, Big Red uh, Sled. <laughs> it was parked there on, uh, I can't remember what the what the street name was, but it was on there on Vines, but there's a family dollar there now. Yeah, so yeah. They seen the real, real estate market once uh, once we moved in, they seen the potential of that corner, so. Right. They moved in, and uh, they're there. And, and and you had a national audience coming through there. Correct. Them truckers knew who you was. Yep. And I still have people call today, actually. They, they come yep. down I-55, hey, man, you open. Run a CB on uh, 55 <laughs> over in uh, Matthews. We sat there and talked to them on a CB radio, and they pull in there to JSH and uh, yeah. get them some Lulu's. Lulu's barbecue, yeah, man. Anyway, uh, and then uh, one of the other memories that sticks out is uh, – up there in St. Charles, remember we went and cooked at that church overnight with uh, Morgan Sexton? Yes. And all that. That was a night of, I don't, I don't remember how many people they said it was that we was cooking Dude, for. Dude, it was crazy. It was like Christmas. is right before, yep. it was like a week or so before Christmas. And we went up there and cooked for their uh, their big, uh, that Methodist church, I think is what it is. And we cooked for their feed the homeless kind of a thing. And Dude, we cooked so much chicken. They had a whole bunch of chefs in the kitchen prepping chicken, and we was so out in the parking chicken. lot cooking up. Dude, they had big old them witch kettles. Remember that in yeah. the parking lot, full of sloppy joes and green beans, and, and it was a it was cold. You know, oh, yeah, that's what you got to remember. Frank called me up. He's like, "Hey, we need somebody else to come up here and cook." So he's like, "All right, we'll go." So we got up there. It is cold. <laughs> I'm talking bib weather. Yeah, so bib cold. We're yeah, loading December. up the, yeah. the big Traeger with uh, all kinds of chicken. We cooked all through the night. 
And let me tell you, that was uh, one of the probably one of the most tiring nights I've ever had cooking, uh, even against competitions or anything else. But it was very rewarding after we got to go see all the people yeah. the next day and all the people and all the vendors and all the food and all the supplies and everything that yeah. you know they was doing for them, which was really great. You know, something we got to be a part of that a lot of people don't get to see behind mm-hmm. in the barbecue world. You know, Lulu's and Pit Hustle have been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, we've done a lot, seen a lot. Uh, we've rebranded into Pit Hustle. Lulu's doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, that's where we're at today, uh, doing some different things, some new things, and uh, mm-hmm. kind of going forward, taking old experiences and uh, moving them into new experiences to, towards the future barbecue. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most I really love what you guys are doing right now. I, I say you guys. Uh, it's Johnny Burkett. Correct. And then it's Cody and Colby, right? Correct. Yeah. And uh, one image, two guys. <laughs> but you'll never tell <laughs> the difference. You'll never be able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are you guys are basically uh, taking the the backyard barbecue guy and helping him up his game, right? That's that's kind of the mission. That's kind of the theory. Uh, back when we got into barbecue, everything was about fun. Mm-hmm. Everything was fun. You know, everybody was cooking a choice or a prime brisket if you got it. Everybody was cooking store-bought meat. Nothing was, you know, ordered in until probably two or three years later. Everybody, you know, we kind of got into the Snake River Farm brisket, the Wagyu. Mm -hmm. You know, we was paying, I think, $120 for a Snake River Gold back then. So, and you got Snake River Gold, you feel like you were somebody. I ain't yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, Boy, yeah. It was like a I piece, remember, piece yeah. of gold that you had. <laughs> but basically, just kind of a fun time to where everybody was kind of gathered around, talked, had fun. Everybody was intense. You know, trailers were just kind of coming onto the scene. Everybody yep. was just kind of hanging out. You could walk around, and talk to everybody. And now it's more, it's not really a spectator sport anymore. It's more about what can I go win to sell this product. Yep. And that's what it's become is I'm going to win on, win on Saturday. Yeah, turn in NASCAR. Mm-hmm. Win on Saturday, sell on Monday. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what it's turned into. But we kind of want to keep it to the level of we're looking towards the guys in the backyard world to where they can come out and say, hey, I got a question. Mm-hmm. We're like, hey, you get close to this contest, come watch the contest. Yeah. You can come here and set. We would, uh, last year we set up spectator tent. Mm-hmm. So basically people could come sit inside the tent and watch us cook. We didn't charge anything. Dude, that's if, awesome. So people can understand what's going on because you get mm-hmm. so many people coming to a contest that go, where's the food at? When do I get to taste stuff? We well, don't get to taste anything. They mm-hmm. don't understand it. You know, like in our culture, how we got into it, we didn't know what barbecue was. Nobody barbecued in our area or family or anything like mm-hmm. that. It was kind of a learn, learn and earn thing is what, you know, Hank Baden told me way back in the day. Yeah, learn, Hank and Baden, earn, yeah. learn and earn degree. But, you know... <laughs> You had to teach yourself yeah. what was going on unless you had somebody pass it down. So we've had to take all that and kind of move it into a new era. Yeah. But take keep it to where people can understand it because the classes are great. I took mm-hmm. one not too long ago. I took Chris Chadwick, not Chris Chadwick, Ch- uh, Chris Schaefer's uh, class not too long mm-hmm. ago, and it was a great class. Uh, most classes run you about five hundred dollars, and a lot of people don't have that type of money getting into barbecue to understand what's going on. Now they will after they've been there for a couple of years and say, okay, well, I see what's going on or they become mm-hmm. judges or something like that. But today we get a lot of messages on uh, Instagram or Facebook just talking about temps or I'm fixing to buy a pit or I'm fixing to do mm-hmm. this because back in the day we didn't know. A lot of beginner know. stuff. Exactly, yeah. a lot of beginner stuff. And that's where everything kind of originates, where mm-hmm. a lot of people I think get lost in translation of where do I start? Yeah. And yeah, they see these results with? that everybody are getting, and they try to duplicate that, but there's really nothing out there to help them, like, this is how you start a fire, this is how you run a fire, this is what you're looking for for the quality of the product that you're pulling in there. You know, th- at this temp, you know, cook for this finish temp, stuff like that. Just real good basic information, right? Just somebody they can relate to. That's yeah. who Johnny is. Johnny's somebody that you can relate to. There's a little <laughs> bit of Johnny in all of us. He's got a little bit of ego. He's got a little bit of, uh, you know, knowledge. He's got yeah. a little bit of, of this and that, but it, everything comes together, and that's always something. If you're not learning in this world, then you're not achieving the goals yeah. that you're going to want to. I can say, take this microphone and move it over there and talk into it, and you can do that. But it takes time to learn how to move that microphone over there and do it correctly. 
to get the same result. To get the same result yeah. every time. And that's what barbecue is, is getting the same result every time, no matter how you want to do it. And I think people have lost the translation of barbecue. There's no right way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just your way. You know, when we started out, I started out with a mopping sauce. Mm -hmm. So when I cooked ribs, I would mop the ribs. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So I went to spray them. Well, the spray bottle get clogged up. So I started eliminating uh, ingredients that was in it. Yeah. Until I actually only have three ingredients in the spray bottle, which is TEA, Tasty Electrified Agent, if you watch the videos. <laughs> is it's it really? I saw that the other day. We've been <laughs> using it for the past 12 years. I remember it was a black uh, black spray bottle had yep. triple X on it. Yep. They have, now it says T. Yep, just says T on it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's the things that you've learned in the beginning. You have to yeah. learn on your own. Yeah. It's not, you can take a timeline, you can take recipes, you can take seasonings, you can take whatever, but you have to make it your own. Yep. Just kind of like with your uh, with the barrel you built for us. Mm -hmm. I have to take it and make it my own. Yep. I have to learn. I have yep. to, to to make it better. It's going to do a certain job. Mm -hmm. But to make it do a better job, I have to learn everything about it. Yeah, you got to practice, practice, practice. Cook some more. Just kind of find your way through it. Figure it out for yourself. Correct. And yeah. I think a lot of people, they want the... Well, I say in this day and time, everybody wants the... Pay the money and get they the trailer, get the, the cooker. Beginning. Yeah, they want to skip the beginning. They want the uh, the hard knocks. Uh, you know, they want to mm -hmm. skip all that and try to go straight to it. And a lot of people will. Some will do it. You know, there's mm -hmm. people that go to judging classes and they'll be in there for a year learning judging classes. And then go, hey, I want to compete. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go take two or three classes and come out and they'll be like, hey, I just want a championship. That's great. You yeah. know, I have nothing against all that. But a lot of us had to learn from the bottom and come up and go, hey, it took me so many times to win something mm -hmm. or to get there. You know, every time we go to a contest, it's always, do we go to win or do you go to have fun? And everybody's there to win and have fun because once you win, you're having a whole lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to come compete at a contest and pay a $1,000 and go home 25 out of 26 teams mm -hmm. because that's just – you know, downheartening because you don't want you don't want to go spend the money. So that's right. kind of the whole reference behind it is just kind of the small things that people can learn or just associate with them or have somebody they can talk to that's on their level that's not going yeah. to degrade them in any way or make fun of them. You know, we have a group that people can ask questions or post whatever. And like I said, even in the beginning, my food was not great. Mm -hmm. It wasn't great. It's just the point. Point being, when you start cooking barbecue, it's going to be crap. No matter if you think it's the best thing in the world, and you believe it is, it isn't. Until yeah. you, you don't know what good is until you had great. Yeah. And I can honestly say that. Until you know, you I had, had great that. one time. Back in the day when Donnie Bray was on the circuit, you know, Warren County Pork Choppers. Yep. I, could, I ate that man's food one time at a class that he was putting on. And I'm telling you what, we were using the same ingredients. Like, I, it's the same old thing that everybody had been using at that time. You know, Cimarron Docks, Smoking Guns Hot. You know, but them ribs, I tell you what, they had a whole different It's all in, whole different yep, thing. It's all in the experience thing. Yeah. And people always, always think it's the beginning of the cook. And that was the same way. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the beginning of the cook, that's where I'm going to win this contest. Mm -hmm. But it's not. You're going to win the contest in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, that's true. That's the truth. It really that's where is. his flavor it's, hit. Yep. Yeah. Either you can take something minutes. that's underdone or overdone, and you can turn it back or move it forward, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. before it goes in that box. Heck yeah. So, I mean, that's just a lot of questions, a lot, a lot of different topics all right there in one, but that's the general <laughs> of everything. So, we'll see what happens now. So, so real quick, Johnny, uh, uh, Pit Hustle, they, they got a group. That's where you can find Johnny. Uh, tell us about like how people can get a hold of Johnny Briquette and just kind of follow you. Uh, you can go to pithustlebbq.com. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have a website. Uh, you can get on there and you can send us an email or Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you have a on Facebook those. group too, I think. We do have a Facebook yeah. group. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really remember the name of it. I just look for the ribs. Yeah, <laughs> Pit, Pit <laughs> Hustle BBQ, I think. So I'm always just, I always look for the picture of the ribs. So And then uh, pithustlebbq.com is where they can go and see what Correct. you're actually doing, right? Correct. So... Well, hey, guys, uh, that was just a little introductory there for uh, for Johnny Burkett. I'm really glad you guys chimed in here and watched, listened. Uh, we're going to have a couple more of these coming up with Johnny here uh, pretty soon. Uh, anyway, I tell you what, uh, barbecue is an awesome sport. It's a, it's a great thing to be involved in. The community is ridiculous. I mean, it's it's it goes so many different directions. Um, Smokerbuilder.com, you know, we've got our forums, we've got our Facebook group. You can get in there and learn how to build a pit and stuff like that. If you want to learn how to cook, get over to the Pit Hustle BBQ. 
group. Look for Johnny. And uh, anyway, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you here again soon.